Okay, so before we do this problem though, we need a little sign convention. This is for your problems. This is for when you do the formula here. And basically what we want in your table, we have two columns here. And basically one is for converging because these, and one is for diverging. Okay? And because these sign conventions are the same for lenses as they are for mirrors, but the shapes of the shapes are kind of off opposite. You know, for our converging lens, we're talking lenses that look like that, which would be called a convex lens, and this would be my that would be the con the concave mirror, but a convex lens. Our diverging here, that would be the mirror, that would be like our 7-11 mirror, and that kind of lens, our diverging on that. So, our object, the, and we're talking, these are our distances, basically we're talking distances here, okay, distances. Object distance is always positive. No matter what, object distance is positive. All right? For converging lenses and mirrors, the focal distance is positive. You saw that in your lab last time. Remember, in your lab you got those focal distances. They're all positive if you're using converging lenses and mirrors. And they're negative for diverging. Negative for <coughs> diverging. Now image, we're going to do a little differently. Real image, positive. So the image distance for a real image is positive, for a virtual image is negative. And the reason we don't put them on here, because can a converging lens or mirror make a virtual image? Yes, mirror they can be real or virtual, where diverging is always virtual. But a positive image, will, a real image will always have a positive, a virtual image will always be negative. Again, we saw that in your lab, all your image distances were positive, okay? On that. And where the image is depends on lens or mirror. Remember, with mirrors, your virtual images are behind the mirror. With lenses, we'll learn that they're on the same size as the object. Where it's kind of opposite with, with the real images for lenses and mirrors, too. All right? Questions? Yes, ma'am. Can you go back to the problem? I will. Let's say, so to make sure everybody have this. So this is our sign convention, or otherwise you're when we especially this next one, because it is a virtual image, you will come up with the wrong image if you don't do it properly here. All right, so which one? Oh, this one. So the focal point. Oh, does anybody need more? Does anyone need more time on that? Sorry. focal point of a concave mirror. So this is a converging mirror, a concave mirror, <laughs> 8 centimeters. <coughs> An object is placed 3 centimeters from the mirror. Object is placed 3 centimeters from the mirror. Using ray tracing lens formula, what is the image distance? Now we have to think, since the object distance is less than the focal distance, this is going to be what kind of image? Virtual. It's going to be a virtual image. And let's think, especially when you're drawing this, the, is this kind of mirror going to make the image, is the image going to be bigger or smaller than the object? Bigger. bigger. So keep in mind when you're writing it, you see what, so this kind of, just when you're drawing it, doesn't matter how big the object is, it doesn't affect where the image is going to appear, but then again, if you make a real big object, you're going to get an even bigger image, you might run off your paper. So you got to be careful on that. It doesn't affect where it appears, 
but it will affect how, how big it is. This is, a, this is something called magnification. There's actually a formula for that we're not going to worry about. Okay, so we're not worried about magnification, but just keep in mind when you're doing these, all right, we have that. So everybody give you a few minutes to work on that. Work with your partner. Look in your notes. You have a guide. Now you are going to be taking a quiz on this stuff next week. Oh, I don't want to hear that. Let's take a look at this. Since it is a virtual image, I kind of put I kind of put the line right in the middle, so I'll get where that's my line. And I'll just move it, get it. So we're right there. There's my mirror line. And remember, this is that kind of mirror. It's a concave. So over here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my focal point right there. <coughs> From the mirror. One, two, three. So there is my object. And I'm not going to make it very big because I know that it's going to magnify it. I know that this type of mirror makes you bigger. Remember, that's like your compact mirror makes you bigger. You guys saw that when you looked at the little mirrors last time on that. So there, first line. First line is always parallel. And it goes back to the focal point. And now if I didn't know this was going to be a virtual image, I would just draw it like that. But I do know it's, a, a, it's going to be a virtual image. So I'm going to then backtrack it into the mirror. So we always backtrack the, the reflected ray. The next ray, and then you would say, well, it's, this is a lot easier for you guys than for me. You say, well, if I draw it through the focal point, it's not going hit to the, hit the mirror. But remember, there's another part of that. Through the focal point or from the focal point. Remember, if you had like a light bulb, a light bulb on the focal point, which is how a flashlight is built, there, the idea is it comes out and goes straight. You had that in your concept builder. There, they had a little diagram of that, the concept builder. There, they had a curve here, which is at the focal point. So you would take your straight edge and just join those two. Hopefully, I can get this right. So it go up like that. It goes actually. Dang it! Dang it! What? Oh wait, that is a concave. It is a concave there. Uh, yeah. So it comes out, but it comes out parallel. So it's going to go in like that. So there would be my. There's my image, and notice my image is erect, which it should be. It's virtual, and it got bigger. So this, well, at least I'm in the right ballpark. My third line there always is always the law of angle in equals angle out, so it's kind of like we backtrack something like that. But I got an image distance of one, two, three, four, five, six. About I is negative six point eight centimeters by drawing. I have to admit when I do this kind on the board, I have a harder time because you know I have. Unlike you, who have a nice straight edge on there, I have a hard time always getting the right distances here. Yes, sir? Is that top one supposed to be parallel with the line that you're on? This, the, both these should be parallel. You know, sometimes when, when I'm this close, it looks parallel. I know when, you, when I back up, oh, it's not parallel, but when I'm, you know, remember, line number one goes in parallel through the focal point. Line number two, through or from the focal point, comes out parallel. This one is always the law of third one is always the law. So let's look at our by formula here. We do it by formula. I get 1 over <coughs> f is 1 over the object plus 1 over i. In your lab you had o and i, but this time we have the focal point. So we get 1 over 8 equals 1 over 3 plus 1 over i. So 1 over i is going to be 1 8 minus 1 third. And I think right away we can see this is going to come out negative because 1 third is bigger than 1 eighth. Negative 5. Yeah. So I get 8 1 over minus 3 inverse. And I get a negative 2.0083. Point, point 0.2083. But then again, I need to take the inverse. So I hit inverse key again. And I get negative, I got negative 4.8 centimeters. 
That's about negative five. So again, you guys might have gotten better. On your drawings, you probably got a more accurate drawing than I did. You know, mine, I have it. Like I said, I have issues I, I with this I did it the exact same way we've been doing every other one, which is not that way, and I got the same exact answer. And it doesn't matter what order you do the lines in, as long as you get the three lines. I drew it as a different image. Okay. But where did it appear? I don't know. I don't know if it's just, it just worked out that way or dumb luck. Okay. Shh. Questions on this one. Next class we'll do another one like this. But we all out, but we want to do, I want you to practice one of a con, convex. So this is a convex, which means the focal point is behind the mirror. Remember, the focal point is behind the mirror. And you draw lines toward the focal point and things like that. So use your guide. This is when you really need to use your guide. So the focal point of a convex mirror is five centimeters. Remember, that's behind. And what, what's the sign on this going to be? Negative. This is going to be negative. It's a diverging mirror. Focal point, focal length is negative. An object is placed eight centimeters from the mirror. But remember, that's in front of the mirror. Object is always in front of the mirror. Using ray tracing, what is the image distance? And what kind of image is this going to be? No. Virtual, because these are always virtual. Is it going to get bigger or smaller? Bigger. Smaller. smaller. Remember this type of mirror. Remember this is the objects are appear are closer than they appear here. All right. Use your guides. Use your guides. Keep it off your spiral. So we have our focal point, which is behind the mirror. One, two, three, four, five. So there's F. We have our object. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's our object right there. Right there. If I do this on the com oh, with the mouse, it might go up a little better. So my first line. Now my first line is always parallel to the axis, like that. But then we have to consider, now it's a diverging lens, so it actually goes out that way. But it goes out that way in line with the focal point. So what you can do, just do is, okay, I'm just going to draw that line through the focal point. And then I can draw it back that direction. Basically, you're going to draw this line just like that. That's line number one. Because it's going to go away. What direction does it diverge? It diverges away from the focal point. Simone, you okay? What? All right. So line number two, now this is more difficult. Line number two, it goes toward the focal point, just like the other one. Remember, we would go toward the focal point or from the focal point or through the focal point. So we're going to try to go through the focal point. But obviously, before I get to the focal point, I'm going to hit the mirror, right? So I'm going to go toward the focal point, kind of like that. So that's where it would go. And then it would reflect out level just like sort of like that <laughs> try it again there we go and then I would come just go back inside just like that the third line again is always the law of reflection angle in equals angle out so we're kind of up that way. So that my, there is my image. My image is right about there. 
there's my image right there. And it appears, so one, two, three, I equals negative three centimeters. And notice it got smaller. It is erect, it's smaller. Questions? Which line? <laughs> this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, that's the law of reflection. Anything that hits the center comes out exactly the same thing. It's the one that hits the oh. center of the mirror. Goes in, say it goes in at 10 degrees, it comes out at 10 degrees. Right. And then we just backtrack it. And that's our third check line. That's our check line on that. So by formula, So I get 1 over negative 5. Remember, it's behind, so the focal length for our diverging mirror is negative. 1 over 8 plus 1 over i. Error, pop. Object is always positive. So I get 1 <coughs> over i is negative 1 fifth minus 1 eighth. So that 1 over i is going to be negative. Okay. Negative by 1 over minus 8, 1 over. I get a negative 0.325. And when I take the inverse of that, I get negative 3.07 centimeters. Which is, I guess I did pretty good that time. So about negative 3. It's not bad. <laughs> I got 3.07, I guess you could say 3.08, if I actually round should be 3.08 to round off well, on that. Well, you should be a little more exact on the formula, because remember, you, this is, this is by, no, by the numbers, this one is more the about. Alright, questions? Next time we'll do some more. Every time we do more, Mary, you guys have a quiz next week oh, on this. Yeah. Uh, hey, how many questions On the final. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Talk about the final. Yeah. So remember, final. You guys have that final on Thursday. Yay. Thursday. Thursday. Yay. Thursday before Memorial Day is the last time we meet. No. It's the last time we meet. That Thursday before Memorial Day. <laughs> what? Yeah, can we have a party? Next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you a party? Okay, so the test covers chapters 21 through 30. For the whole test, you get an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. In other words, a piece of binder paper, front, back, handwritten, all that good stuff. Yay. Last half hour of the testing period, you can have your book, book and notes. Book and notes, and you can turn your book in afterwards on that. What? So on that, and so it'll be that day, it's 100 questions, which is how many questions you get, can get on a one single scan card. So how much is it just going to be the after the Usually it's about, what? <laughs> did I not write that down? Uh, no one reads uh, that corner of the board. I do. I read it. I think it's kind of organized. You know, box it and stuff. So, basically, it's the chapters of this, of this semester, all that stuff, including the stuff we're going over now. Okay, so 100 questions on that. We're evenly dispersed. All multiple choices. How much does it work? Although maybe there's little problems with that. And usually it's about 12% of your final grade. Yeah. Depends on the person. All right. So if you still owe me some back work, so make sure you get that in. So let's get our notes. We are going to continue. Let's see. I believe. Let's see. We finished. Where were we? I think that was the last thing we talked about, right? No. Oh. Oh. That's that. Oh. We, we talked about the diamond? Yeah. Okay, so that means we are on the rainbow.
Let's ignore, let's ignore that this would be more of a rainbow. Let's ignore this for a while. We'll come back. We'll but come back to this one. Ignore that one. That's a double rainbow. But rainbows, rainbows, Shh. rainbows, caused by refraction and internal reflection. Caused by refraction and internal reflection. The sun must be at your back, and the drops have to be at the proper angle to see them. And because it has to be a, a particular angle, everybody sees their own rainbow. Nobody can see the same rainbow. You can see a similar rainbow, but you will never see the same rainbow because the drop of droplets of water that you're seeing the rainbow from are different from the person that's even standing right next to you. So everybody gets their own personal rainbow. A rainbow is a personal thing. Like I said, the person next to you might see a similar rainbow. And things like that. Yes, ma'am. They would look very similar. But then again, if, if we actually had like eight or nine pictures, they might vary a little bit because the rain is not going to be even coming down. So different people might see it in different different ways. In other words, the way the rain coming down is not totally even, so it's going to look a slightly different. <coughs> yes. When I'm done. Unless you're desperate. Now, this is how it works. I'll come back to that one. When the sunlight comes in, sunlight comes in, it gets refracted. And we all know that the longer wavelengths get refracted less than the than the higher wavelengths on that so the violet gets refracted more so it comes in gets refracted it bounces off the back of the rain of the droplet which is total internal reflection and it gets bent again so notice the violet is actually above the red but what's the top color of a rainbow red you might say well but violet's on top and that's true but notice when you see the red light here where is the violet light going? It's going over your head. So the violet light from the upper raindrops goes over your head. You see the lowest point, which is red, which puts it at the top. The, one, the raindrops at the bottom, you see the violet light, but the red light's basically hitting you in the chest. And all the other colors are in between. So as you see this line of rainbows, so there's all these droplets in between, that you're seeing the orange and the yellow and the green and the blue and the indigo on that. And this is how it works on that. But notice, where's the sun? The sun is over here. This is where the sun is. The sun has to be at your back. Raindrops have to be on this. It has to be something like 42 degrees, something like that. Now, this basically kind of how do you get double kind of double rainbows and things like that? Notice we're getting multiple reflections inside. So sometimes because we get multiple reflections, you know, if we only got two reflections, boom, boom, here, notice we we're getting these two reflections on this one. It, sh it shifts kind of the angle we're getting things at. Because the second rainbow of a double rainbow, what's on top? Light. What color's on top? Red. Violet's on top. Because remember, when we look here, remember the violet comes out on top, but on the double rainbow, it's the <coughs> red that comes on top because it gets an additional reflection on the inside. It puts So the red goes over the top of our head, and you see violet. So when you get double rainbows, that puts the, the it's because you get an extra reflection inside. You know, you can even have triple, I've seen triple rainbows. But usually you have the main rainbow, and then you have a rainbow above and a rainbow below. And they each have the violet on top on that. But what is the shape of a rainbow? The circle. It's a circle. And you have, and basically it's a circle of 42 degrees. And well, you only see one side because if you're on the ground, what, is, what happens to the bottom side of the, of the circle? Well, where it would be what? In the ground. But what if you're on an airplane? 
So what if I was on, say, a helicopter here? Would it look like a ring? You would see it as a ring. Well, you really can't because it, as, it, as I'm moving here, my rainbow is going to be moving. Because remember, you have to maintain this 42 degrees. This is why it's like if you're moving toward, or, toward the rainbow, if you get to a certain point with the raindrops, like if there are gaps in the raindrops, the rainbow will disappear because you have to be at this 42 degree angle to see the rainbow. What? I used to, I don't know, it disappeared. But you can see, but they're actually a circle. You know, in the Bay Area, the one where I see the most vivid rainbow is actually going across the San Mateo Bridge. I've seen a lot of real, because in the afternoon you come back, sun's like right behind you. As you go past the San Mateo Bridge, the sun's almost directly behind you. And if it's raining, and you get that gap, you see these very, these, basically these rainbows that go over the top of the bridge. And when you only get partial rainbows, like I only got half the rainbow. Well, that's because that's where the rain is. If there's no rain, there's no rainbow. So they kind of go together. All right. Lenses. lenses, which you did last time. You had some, you had did that exercise about lenses. Plastic didn't go there. Just put it on the, on the, put it on the cart. All right. So, our le so lenses. Now, lenses look, work a lot like our mirrors, only instead of bouncing off the boundary, remember they're transparent and you go through go through. It's a piece of transparent material that can bend parallel light rays so they cross or appear to cross. So like the, these are the kind of lenses you guys were using. These spherical lenses and it made things go to a point you saw it like you saw your little candle flame on the screen. Here this would be our, our diverging lens and it's going to appear over on this side. Appear on that side. But it's also like the magnifying glass. With the magnifying glass, you get that image. Yes, ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's transmitter that can bend parallel like so. They. They cross. If that, you know, Paris in the, the strength, spring thing. There. What, what did I say when I read it? I said day. That's why I have to look at it. Okay. Okay. Because that's the word I said. <coughs> and you see, that's also why I put like my glasses. Because my glasses, my, my glasses are actually converging lenses. So notice it converges the light. It is converging the light on that. And I really don't have that thick of reading glasses. I mean, these aren't very big, but they are converging. But these are converging lenses. I mean, these have actually less power than the ones you would buy, like at, a, at Walmart or something. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone need more time? So some terms, and they're very similar to our terms for the mirror. Well, remember that there are focal points on both sides of a lens. Whereas the mirror, it's on one side only. The focal point's either in front of the lens or behind the lens, or for a mirror, it's either in front of the mirror or behind the mirror. For a lens, you do have a focal point on either side. So notice, we have our focal length, so the same thing. So we have a focal point and a focal point on either side. Center of curvature, we mentioned that. Remember, center of curvature is twice the focal length. Remember, these are spherical lens, so this represent this would be the center of that circle, the center of that sphere. The focal point is halfway in between. Principal axis is the line that goes to the middle here. Now, notice on this particular lens, the focal points are the same, right? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what we're going to be dealing with. That's what you dealt with in lab, what we call a symmetrical lens. In other words, you use these little lenses in your thing that the focal point on either side is the same. Because if I didn't give you a lens that way, depending on which way you put the lens, would affect on that. In fact, which number did you get with the longest focal point? Two. Lens or mirror? I got lens four. Lens four? Three. Three. Mirror three. Mirror three. 
I think usually the pink mirror usually comes out yeah, for one of the longest. What? What? Yeah, yeah, mirror four usually has the longest, yeah, the longest one. Like Sometimes it might be, um, this is, should be the shortest. There was one real fat like this, that was pretty much the shortest. The greater the curve, usually the shorter the focal length. The less the curve, the smaller on that. But if I made, if I made a lens like this, would that have the same focal length? No, this is what would be called an asymmetric lens. In fact, this is how eyeglasses look. Eyeglasses are not usually ground this way. Now, this would be a magnifying glass. If you have magnifying glasses, it would be symmetric. Your eyeglasses are ground asymmetrically. In other words, the curve on one side is not the same. That's why you have all those numbers. All those numbers that you, if you get, if those of you wear eyeglasses, you see on your prescription, there's like all these numbers. Basically, what they're talking about is focal lengths. When they have diopters, you know, your di this diopter, that diopter. I ask, the diopter is the inverse of the focal length in meters. That's what a diopter is. It's the inverse of the focal length in meters. I asked my optometrist one time exactly what that was measuring. But some of the others also tell them to put, where is the center of your eyes? Your eyes obviously want to be, the, your, the, your pupil should be on the principal axis of the lens. Which is why some people, you know, you, two people might have the same prescription, they shouldn't wear each other's glasses because their principal axis is probably in a different spot. <coughs> so it doesn't always work for them as well. So convergent lens. A convergent lens. Parallel light rays will come to, <coughs> to a focus. You saw that because you were making your pictures there. This is also called a convex lens. Notice the wording. The converging mirror is a convex mirror, but the converging lens, or excuse me, converging mirror is the concave, but the converging lens is a convex. That's why on that table, there the table I gave you at the beginning of the class, I used the word converging and diverging. So diverging lenses, this is our like, converging lenses. So this is our converging, it will come to a point. Also, if I put, say if I put something, a light source right here, the rays are going to come out parallel. The rays would come out parallel. Same idea as our mirror. Anyone need more time? All right, everybody good? Now, divergent lens, parallel rays will not come to a focus. Will not come to a focus, so they are diverged outward, and they will create only virtual images. Only virtual, just like our divergent mirror only got, creates divergent mirrors, so we call these a concave because those, they go in on that. And the thing is, the, the, the image will appear to be on the same side as the object when we have virtual images. So we have a little slide about that. Here's our next slide. So, image formation, real images. Now, this is a change. Remember, with mirrors, the real, now, this is the difference between a lens and a mirror, is that one right there. Real images are still inverted. They still have a positive image distance, but they will appear on the opposite side of the lens from the object. So, if this was my object, my image is going to be on the opposite side. <coughs> on the opposite side. This is the difference between mirrors. Remember the mirror, the real image is going to be on the same side of the mirror as the object. But it's on the opposite side. Which is why our focal lengths are 
is positive. Remember, it's positive on the far side. Okay, so we, everything has to do with the far side and near side on that. The virtual images are still erect. They still have a negative image distance, but they will appear to be on the same side as the object. So like if I was looking, if this was my eye right there, and there's my lens, there would be my object, there would be my image. Now, do I see both of these? No, I'm only going to see the image. I'm only going to see the image. And again, if I'm looking from that side, there's my object, object image like that. And notice that our, that our converging lens, just like our converging mirror, makes the image bigger. Our diverging lens, like our diverging mirror, is going to make the image smaller. So you have the same kind of things going on. Anyone need more time? Shh. Now, so, virtual image. See, here's our object, here's our image, real image. And this is what you guys did last time. Our object, our image on the other side, like that. And so we do, we also do ray tracing with lenses. And they're very, the rules are very similar, but keep in mind that instead of dealing with the near side focus, what was the near side focus with mirrors is now the far side. The things we do with the far side focus, so our basically, our, it's kind of like we're, we're reversing how we draw the lines. But our ray, and it actually in some ways it's a little easier. First ray, and we'll use this one. So here's my object. First ray is parallel. There's the focal point, and it goes to the focus. Kind of just the same way we did more, but it was parallel, came to the focus. Goes out parallel, goes to the focus. Second line is even easier because it's always just a straight line. You don't have to do anything to it. You just have to draw the line. So our second line, if this is our object, our second line just goes through the middle. Just goes to the middle. Just draw a line. Don't even have to bend it. Just goes straight through. Any, anything that goes through the middle of the lens just goes straight through. That's why those of you who are far-sighted, or they are near-sighted, and you don't have your glasses on, but if you squint, you ever notice that you can see clearer because basically you're restricting so the light has to pass through the very center of your lens. And so you don't get the aberrations that are caused by your astigmatism and things like that, which is the rounding. So your lens should be kind of a, a round, should be round like a sphere. Only those of us who are nearsighted, our, our lens is kind of shaped like a football. And the ray. And so now the third line, the third line is like this. So here's my object. Again, here's my focal point. So a ray from the near side focal point will come out parallel. So remember, there's a focal point on both sides. We have this focal point on both sides, so this ray will come out parallel. I mean, that's the ray we're talking about. It's kind of like the number two ray for a virtual image. You know, it's kind of like that where we have our near side focal point. Or actually, if I drew it more like we're going to be like this. Here's my thing right there. We draw it through, it comes out parallel. But any ray that comes from or through the near focal point will come out parallel. Okay, so when you kind of have this all together, there are two focal points. Here's that. So we have one, goes like that. Two, goes straight through the middle. Three, down and out like that. And there would be my image. So it kind of forms like a trapezoid when you get to the end. All right, and next time we'll practice some of those. Yes, sir. I don't know. In a minute. All right, any questions? I was going to do the concept builder, but I discovered one, the first, the, the chat, the 31 concept builder, you guys have actually done. 
that was that's your that was the sunball exercise. Is actually that one. Yeah, I never did that. And the other one is kind of doing the ray tracing, which we'll do anyway, so we won't worry about it. Let's watch Mythbusters. Yeah. Didn't finish the last one.